All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja show. Uh, we just concluded the newspaper review with Ezugu Chukudi, and I believe say Ona really gets a, a one or two to take away from that. If you're just joining us, uh, well, you missed out on the top stories and the newspaper review, but uh, and, and don't, don't, don't be frightened. We're moving on to something very, very, very interesting, and you need to be part of. This is, uh, we're going to be having a conversation with a very exceptional individual. Uh, it goes by the name Mr. Bukola Akano, and he's the CEO of Kid monitor. He's a proprietor of Solid Foundation Children's School. So, uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Akano. Welcome to the show. I'm very delighted to be here. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Now, uh, let's even uh, start from, uh, from the beginning. Let's have a conversation from the beginning. Children, uh, you know, they're they say people who could take care of children can really change the world because it's not easy to take care of kids. You know, it's a lot of work put in, uh, put in a lot of work put in. But let's start from uh, from your perspective now. Um, Kid Monitor, what? How is that? Let's let's start from there. You're the CEO of Kid Monitor. What's Kid Monitor about? All right. Um, basically, the Kid Monitor service. Uh, is designed in such a way to ensure that the safety of kids in between uh, the school yes. and the home. A lot of people just assume that when you send the child to school, he's there. Or when he's coming back, he does not have any other place he has been to before he gets back home. But most of the time, the vices, the bad things that happen to these kids don't even happen in the school. They happen in between. Uh, you have the issue of the kidnapping. It's right at the time the child is about to leave school. You have someone who is not authorized that comes to pick up the child. Yes. Or in the time when the child is meant to go straight home, he goes to a point B, which is zero has zero um, supervision whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You will have things like teenage pregnancy occurring. So the kid monitor here is supposed to ensure that there's a complete um, transaction loop between the parent and the school, making sure that um, that loophole between that pickup and drop-off is well taken care of by proper documentation. So once a child uh, gets to school, just like the way we have in the banking sector, when you have a person come to the bank to make a deposit into the, into the bank, the parents get an alert stating that this is the time uh, sorry, the parent get a time, yes, an alert that this is the time the child arrived at school. Okay. So if there's any discrepancy, for example, I, I expect my child to be in school in 30 minutes. He left home at 7 o'clock. And he's getting to school in one hour. That means something happened for 30 minutes that I need to be able to find out. Most of these vices don't just occur out of the blue. It's because nobody's keeping track of this timing. So... The idea of the kid monitor here is to ensure that once the child gets to school, the parents are aware of the time. Once the child has left, the parents are aware so that they can be able to keep tabs of this. Mm. We've also done some modifications to also ensure that the security angle also is there. When the device takes a picture of who came to pick up the child when it comes to the issue of toddlers, so that if there's any problem, you have a face to match to the whole issue, not okay. just hearsay. Yeah. Biometric evidence that this is a young man that came to pick up the child, and this was the time he came up to pick up this child. Hmm. It's as simple as that. Beautiful. So what prompted this, uh, this initiative for you? What prompted it? Uh, seeing the fact that you are a proprietor of a school, was it um, yeah. um, a personal situation that prompted this uh, new innovation, or how did it come about? <laughs> It was a personal problem. Actually, I like to call myself uh, a second generation proprietor. Okay. My school is almost as old as I am. My mom started the school in the first place. And um, a, a couple of years, about five years ago, six years ago, I came in to um, take over M's of affairs in the school. Okay. And I had a particular child who was given his school fees. My area is one of the best areas. My school is in Ajigune. Okay. And uh, this child was given his school fees. Go ahead, pay your school fees. And he went to all these lovely places. I went to place a bet with his school fees. Wow. So he could not come to school because he had blown the school fees, but he could not stay at home. This boy was in basic six, primary six. Hmm. 
So when we didn't see him for a couple of days, we contacted the mother. We have not seen your child in a couple of days. Her response was very shocking for me. She said, the boy is in school. And he from this morning and he has left. And the boy is not in school. He has not been in school for three days. So later we found out, I was like, wow, this is very funny because this child, anything could happen. We don't even know where he was going to. Yeah. The mom has assumed he was in school and we just assumed he was at home. So I just put something together to just have uh, a digital receipt to the mother. See, this is when I took custody of your child. And this is the time he has left my custody. And that's how it actually started. I didn't even have a business angle to it. I just wanted to solve that problem. Hmm. And the few schools saw the idea and they came on board. And right now we have roughly about 90 schools nationwide running the, the service. Hmm. So as it is now, like you said, you have over 90, like 90 schools running the service nationwide. Uh, how has yes. it been, the acceptability of this new innovation to the schools and to the parents? Has it been, have they been uh, accepting it well? Have they seen it as a better development? Or have you had the cases where parents would frown at it? I'm like, no, I don't want to get involved. We'll just do the normal way we've been doing before. Has that ever happened? I can say clearly that over 90% of the parents were very excited about it. Hmm. Uh, it was not easy to get them. You know, when you come with a new technology or new idea, a lot of people don't just take it hook like a line and sinker. You have to get people to try it out and you know, get feedback. And for the past five years, we've been running it. In the first two years, was really hard. But when we got feedbacks, we kept on improving. We have... Uh, Currently, the version four, because as we built, I built the first one, there were some flaws. People gave me feedbacks. Mm -hmm. I was able to we developed version two. Uh, some students were able to beat version two, mm -hmm. so we brought version three. They still were able to beat version three, and we came out with version four last year, and that's the current version right now. So far, uh, they have not been able to beat version four. For now. Well, I like I like I like the conversation of how you were taking it. You said they were able to beat. Now, is it that yes. they, they were able to hack it? Is it that they were able to uh, beat the system? What 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 were they doing that made you always want okay. to reevaluate it and make it you know uh, make a new version of what you have? What were the students doing? All right. Uh, the first versions we came out with, uh, the students, especially the secondary school really kicked against it the students themselves not the parents okay because they knew that with this now the parents could now actually monitor how they moved they could not lie about they were doing something extra in school or they had an extra assignment they were having to do in school so uh version one basically was just the use of a smart card okay so the what they now did was that when you get to the school they say i don't have my smart card on me hmm. so if you don't have a smart card, you cannot use the device, so you, go, you cannot even tell what, uh, what time I came to school. Yes. So we came out by adding the fing uh, fingerprint to the option. Okay. So if you had your smart card or the fingerprint, you could be able to use any of the two. Yeah. We now discovered that in version two, the students started to use their fingers to try to ensure that their fingers were really dirty so the device could not read it. Are you serious? So we came with version three okay. that had the option of a pin code. So if you did not have the smart card, the smart card yeah. and your fingers were dirty, yeah. you know your pin code. They also said that uh, uh, they were forgetting their pin code. Interesting. So we came up with version four, which now has the smart card, the finger in the pin code, and facial recognition. Wow. You cannot forget you your can't face forget at your face. <laughs> Wow. So you so, had to go through these measures to make sure that it exactly. was secure. Amazing. Exactly. Now, on, 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 uh, on the back end of, of this, or is it that how secure is this, um, is, is this device or this innovation to, uh, to, okay. to you on, on, on the back end? Is it that can... Is it, can anyone access it? Because I'm sure you're giving a level of access to the parent from home yes. so that they can know where their child is or what their child is doing at a particular time. So how, how secure is it? Can, can it be, right. you know, altered from anywhere else? All right. So what we've done, step one, is that we're not using the internet for any of these issues. Okay. 
Okay. It is an SMS. Is a message. So you can't just log in somewhere and make some things work. It's an SMS and a text. The second thing we've done is that we have a three key system. That means all the information are not stored in one location. We have some of it stored on the device, physical in the school. We have some of it stored on the cloud and some on the physical server. All these three things have to be in sync before you can be able to hack it. That means it's going to be very, very difficult. That means person has to go to the school, steal the device, yes, hack our cloud server, then break in call it to our head office here in Africa before he can do anything of that okay. nature. Okay. Okay. So we make sure that we have a three key system. You have to have all the three keys together before you can even make any changes. I don't even have access to the three. As the CEO, I have just access to two. Mm. Mm. Okay, so I, I would like to know, um, you, you mentioned that there's a device you put in the schools. So it's just yeah. a device you put in each school and the students get to have the smart cards and uh, the PIN codes. And the biometric, the yeah. biometrics. Okay, yes. so, so it's a single device put in every school. Exactly. Okay, so so um, you link that device to the parents' phones to get the text messaging. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, has it been in any in a case where the device gets you know the students, play, you know, do play a prank on the device or they spoil it, they damage the device in the school? How do you um, how do you sort that out as soon as possible so that you don't have days before the students can okay you get it back and running? Do you have on ground? Very good. Do you have an on ground team in the school who can handle that or? How does that work? What we do is as soon as there is an issue with your device, you contact the company, we send another device immediately. So it just takes as long as a, dev a new device will leave from the company to your location. Okay. So within some, if it's in Lagos, within two, three hours, we'll replace. And because there's a way, we, because the system has a three key system already, yes. part of the information is on ground already. So all you just have to just do is, so like the smart card, for example, mm -hmm. will start to work immediately. They will just have to re register the biometrics for the students. But basically, it does not take a whole day for us to get, even if they physically device, destroy the device. Yes. Yes. So it, it takes it, a couple of hours. It takes a couple of hours for it to be up and running again. Now, it's, exactly. it's, it's good that these measures are being put in place because when you started off by saying there was a test type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and uh, the reasons why these new versions were coming out, I was, I was really concerned. So as it stands now, they've not been able to beat type 4, according to what you exactly. said. Exactly. <laughs> so we, we, we tested, we started this device and service in the toughest of areas. I told you my school in Nigeria. Nigeria. We have about eight schools in, yes, we have about eight schools in Nigeria running this correctly and we keep tabs of everybody. So if there's any slight notice that there's something that is they're not adding up, yes. the first thing we try to do is start working. We're working on version five, but okay. it's not because they're beating version four. Version okay. five will have a temperature reader in it. Just so you can check the temperatures, also as you're taking the attendance, the temperature is also taken instantly too. Okay. But it's still in the prototype stage. We have not released version five yet. Yeah, and and I would say, and I would uh, would like to know why you decide to put a temperature monitor. Is it because of the coronavirus pandemic situation right now? That's why you put it. Not necessarily. Monitor. We also notice that some parents know that their kids are sick, and still bring them to school. Okay. Okay. The, the pandemic was one of the things that, you know, why a lot of people will not want us to have um, uh, the kids coming in school when they are sick. So it's good to have something at the gate. Since the device stays at the gate, this is the first point of contact for every child. Every child, yes. So when you come in, the temperature is taken at the same time while you take your attendance. And once you are flagged, the prototype is supposed to indicate there's an alarm that blows. See, this person has an abnormal temperature basically means I don't ad admit him to school. Hmm. Now, but we're still, it's still, it's still in the prototype stage. We're not prototype. released back yet. Now, seeing the fact that you said it is not internet-based, so which means it can't be hacked via the internet. Uh, yeah, that's what you said. Exactly. 
It runs on exactly. the on the SSD um, um, code. Uh, SSD, Using the SMS, same card, yeah. The same card. Okay, fine. So That's as it is right now, um, we are looking at the new normal in, in the world, seeing how things are evolving due to the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of things are changing from learning. Even from learning, it's more of e-learning right now. And uh, coming up with innovations like this, uh, technology. So how important do you, would you say it is for schools to um, you know, adopt technology into the learning process for, for, for the kids? Generally, technology helps make things easier. There's uh, no doubt that um if technology is incorporated into the day-to-day -day activities in the school, mm -hmm. it will make things easy. But, you know, the, the challenges that face us uniquely as Nigerians is that um, we have um, some infrastructural deficiencies, True. power, the internet, and um, most of these things make it hard to be able to switch completely from a, a typical classroom to the e-classroom completely. Yeah because a lot of things are dependent on power and interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. We are actually trying to design something in such a way that you have um, a free Wi-Fi zone, similar to what we have in the universities where um, devices can get to connect, but not necessarily require the internet. Mm -hmm. But the limitations for this is that this is just also things that are localized. So they have maybe a uh, maybe maximum of maybe 500 to one kilometer radius, which means that if you are beyond that um, distance, they you may not be able it. to connect. Yeah. Yes. But uh, the challenge also that, okay, even if we have this in place, power is a very, very fundamental part of this whole thing. No light, no technology. Hmm. So, so how, what, what would you say, um, has, how has it been for this innovation? Uh, government participation, seeing as it is the government participation, has the government been involved? Have they seen this as, have you, you know, pushed this to the, the government to be, to buy into it as, as an innovation forward, moving forward into uh, the educational sector? Have you had the conversation like that? We have not had the chance to, because practically the bureaucracy in Nigeria is, is very funny. Uh, in schools we, we have installed this in, the quality assurance officers who have come to, to do inspections in the school have seen and they've applauded. But that's all. They just applaud and they don't feel that it's something that we need to push forward. I don't know why. We have tried to see how to get government intervention in this and, you know, because I feel my dream is to have this installed in as many schools as possible. I understand the, the, the menace that happens after school hours. Yeah. Sometimes you walk around, you see children sitting in their school uniform, just going about, getting involved in fights, getting involved in things they should not be getting involved with. And uh, this is painful for me as a person, and like one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. Government has not even given any form. I have applied for grants, I've applied for, I had to go through nerve breaking financial decisions to be able to get where I am right now. Yeah. And still, I applied to the Bank of Industry several times, sent out uh, my business plan, I explained about the necessity of this um, uh, technology. We didn't hear anything from them. So I had to do what I need to do as as a uh, young entrepreneur, fund it myself without any form of um, financial assistance. Hmm. So uh, I would have asked this earlier, but how long would it, does it take you to, you know, how did it take you to uh, create this device or this innovation? How long did it take you? Because seeing that you had to really change the, the versions from one to another, one to four, and uh, how long did it take you to put this together? And the, the, the durability of this, of this device, because I believe that some schools would ask you this, saying, okay, well, if you want okay. to invest in this, how long would it, be, uh, would it be durable for? Do we have to always uh, change, in a, uh, for, change it to a newer device every um, given year? Or how, how does it work? How long is the durability? All right. Um, 
my first client, that's uh, Dockers Memorial School here in Ajigunle, came on board almost five years ago. Okay. And they're still running till date. Hmm. We've not had any issues. Uh, what we've just done, like, anytime, anytime we had to do any upgrade, just let them know. They're currently still using version 2.0. Okay. And 2.0 is still working till date. Hmm. So, in terms of durability, we have factored a lot of things into it. For example, uh, I talked about the issue of power. Yeah. They, we built in a, a, a lithium battery pack that can last for three days if there's no power, once it's fully charged. Because we know that power will be an excuse. Yes, I was going to ask so, that too, yes. Exactly. So we, we've looked into all of this, and um, we can... Version 1 is what I'm still using in my school, because I can monitor it. But I'm still using version 1, and I'm not having any issues with it. And so far, so good. Yes, there's some one or two times we have issues with batteries and things like that. But apart from that, so we also make sure that we do after sale service because practically, if the service does not run, we don't make any money. True. So it does not make sense for us to have you get a device that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Okay. So uh, so far, you said uh, m most of the schools you've uh, pitched this to have uh, welcomed it. And uh, you said over 90 schools across the nation have been in, uh, um, in acceptance of this new innovation. But now, seeing that uh, you're based in Lagos and there are other uh, schools all around the, um, the, the country, do you have uh, uh, other stations in other states who are also going to be m making sure other schools uh, in those states are well serviced? Or do, we all, do they all um, fall back to the headquarters here in Lagos like you? Um, our handling is that the is, is oh. that the case? No, we we have we have we currently have representatives in Abuja, Port Harcourt, and Ibadan. Okay, correctly, and they have the the tax to so they they are customer relation officers who take care of each of the school within their zones because currently the schools we have are in Port Harcourt. Abuja, Kaduna, Ibadan, mostly in Lagos because I'm here, so most of the schools. I in uh, Lagos here, uh, but we still ex we still want to grow into other geopolitical zones. We're looking at uh, Sokoto and Megidugu because we have some interested clients that are coming from that ag axis. Mm -hmm. But like I said, funding is funding. You cannot set up an office in without money. Without money, and we have to, you know, gradually coming from where we are. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, it's been a very, very insightful conversation, uh, Mr. Bukola Akano. And I would like to ask uh, for just a final question. If, uh, what other a part of education would you suggest technology rule over? Like if you were to create some other kind of app or another kind of uh, uh, in innovation that could help uh, education in technology aspects, which other aspect would you want to create something regarding? Okay. Um, most people are already doing some of the things I have in mind. Uh, uh, they, I would have preferred having the e-classrooms recorded. Recorded, okay. When I, when I look back to when I was in school, I wish sometimes I didn't have to pick up my books to read again. I just wish to just listen to my teacher one more time. Hmm. So that I could actually go play back I get the explanation because the textbook cannot be as, um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be as, would explain as much as my teacher would like to do. Mm. So if I, it was a way I could record my class, then be able to go back home in the evening and relieve my school again, take out notes. Maybe when I was in class, there was a distraction, it was hard, or maybe yeah. I missed one or two things. Yeah. I could go back again and do that. I would have loved something of such. Hmm. So, mean, but not just not just anybody, but just my class. So the schools could have that installed. So they have um, more of like an FTP server where they could have the classes recorded real time. Mm -hmm. And um, also in Lagos, the issue of um, having floods and people not being able to come to school, 
if we could have those classes recorded and they could come back to that later on, so they don't actually miss school. They're not in school, but the teacher can, can still get the classroom experience later on, either via um, the school website or something, mm -hmm. something of the nature. Mm -hmm. I would have loved something like that to be, to be possible. Amazing, amazing. It's very, very, it's, it's good. When you said it, I even thought about it. It would be a good idea to watch and relieve your class experience again when you get home. That way you can uh, take down notes and you wouldn't miss anything because you, uh, you are not uh, distracted. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abukola Akano, for this conversation. And we're hoping that uh, this great innovation would make a change uh, and make the actual change that you want it to make. Thank you for your time on the show today. My pleasure. All right. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.